I used to say that the U.S. Congress was occupied territory, and I still sort of feel that way, and yet uh, there's a change you know, happening. Uh, you testified before a congressional subcommittee uh, along with others and met with Congress people, particularly around the No Way to Treat a Child uh, campaign. Uh, there's Betty McCollum and others now who are really stepping forward uh, to, uh, uh, to protect and to advocate for uh, Palestinian rights, particularly around Palestinian children. Talk a little bit about th this change that you see happening in the government, I mean, among our representatives that I never thought I would see in my lifetime, frankly. You know, the, the system of government that we have is really designed to be uh, responsive to the citizens. That, that we are, I, I, at least ideally speaking, they're supposed to represent us. Um, and when we see the rise of lobbies and the rise of individual moneyed interests, um, we see that um, whether you call it occupied or is it just the, you know, the the system that has arisen, uh, in particularly money in politics, has been a, a very, very difficult uh, obstacle for, for democracy. Uh, and Israel, you know, the is Israel lobby is, is one of many examples of how, uh, how this is manifest on Capitol Hill. Uh, but I don't think the original idea of, of a Congress and a government that's responsive to uh, to, to its citizens is, is something that is, um, we should give up on. Um, I, I have met with congressional leaders you know, over and over and over again who don't necessarily disagree with the things I'm proposing. And eventually what they say is, you know, uh, I would love to be able to do, say what you're saying, but I need a constituency. You need to go back and build and organize so that I can say these things and you, I, you can tell me that, that you have my back. You know, uh, I'm not going to take a, a chance on this unless I feel like there is a constituency that's, that's with me on this. So I think what you're seeing with an example of the No Way to Treat a Child bill, and that is a congressional bill, bill uh, H.R. 2407, that was introduced by Representative Betty McCollum of Minnesota, uh, a very brave uh, and congressional person who uh, has now twice uh, introduced a bill that is holding Israel accountable on its military detention of Palestinian minors, uh, both its kidnapping of them, uh, their imprisonment of them, their mistreatment of them, and subjecting them to a military court system, which is the only country in the world, literally, that imprisons children in military prisons. Um, you know, Betty McCollum was able to, uh, to take this brave stand because of this movement of, of organizing that's going on that is, uh, advocating uh, against Israel's occupation and focusing on uh, children and the rights of children as one very important example of that. I think when we look at the example of Israel's treatment of minors, it gives us an entry into this big complicated issue of the occupation that many people don't understand or um, think is just much too complicated. Um, and what we've seen is with good organizing and brave congressional people like Betty McCollum and not only her, um, we can see that, that these are issues that uh, political uh, figures are willing to take on. So I, I think I'm not ready to give up on the power of, of advocacy and organizing, um, but we can't hold our political uh, representatives accountable unless we're willing to do the hard work to, to organize our own communities yeah. uh, to stand with them. The other thing I'll say in the answer to your question, uh, Michael, is that I think we are seeing a change. I mean, I never... I, I'm not overstating this. I never thought I'd see the day when a representative of Congress would call APAC a racist organization. Amazing. I would never thought I would live to see the day when a, uh, a leading candidate for the presidential nomination of, uh, of this country refused to go to an APAC convention and said it's a bigoted organization. Um, and in neither case are they paying a significant political price for saying these things. In fact, there were other political candidates who refused to go to uh, the APAC convention as well. Uh, um, so I think we are seeing the beginning of a change. And 
Uh, part of that change is, is due to the power of just basic grassroots organizing. Uh, because I think there is a majority in this country that uh, feels that Israel's occupation is uh, immoral uh, and, and that uh, it is heading, that it's wrong for this country to be financially supporting it to the extent that we are. Um, we need to amplify that voice and I think we'll find that politicians uh, will be receptive to uh, representing those voices on the Hill.